All right, what is up guys? Today I have uh, my work cut out for me. Uh, I'm trying to get some of this stuff moved to the backyard. This is a new stock tank I got from my friend Shay. She was one of the contractors that helped on the Aquascape build. Uh, she had this big stock tank and she didn't need it anymore. Uh, and then my parents dropped off some wood for a few projects I'm working on. Uh, I got some plants to plant. Uh, also have fil some filtration, driftwood stump, plenty of hoses. So I'm gonna be putting this stuff into the backyard today. But first, I wanted to answer some of your questions. And uh, so that's what we'll do. We'll do a quick Q&A. Planting a palm right now. All right. Just gonna transfer this into the ground right here. Ground, just like that. here all right <clears throat> so the first question comes from Seamus the Seamus the wildlife lover and he says what sparked your love for nature especially turtles um, and for me I mean really I grew up just being outside you know there wasn't the internet and a lot of electronic stuff when I was a kid you just kind of went outside you went outside to play or to explore and growing up in Florida uh, I would just go outside and wander around with my brother with a backpack and you know with a sandwich and a field guide and I would just go try to find stuff from that and I ended up just enjoying that the most and that, that ended up just kind of translating into having a backyard with all this kind of stuff because this is what I liked this is who I've always been so um, yeah that's, that's really it and you know now I'm 40 years old and I'm still kind of doing the same thing so I don't know Either I've really blown it or I'm doing something right, so I guess we'll see. Awesome. Spread it back around. There we go. Alright, so next question comes from uh, my friend Jenna, ex snake princess on Instagram, and she says, What was your gateway reptile species? How did I get into keeping breeding? Um, so, yeah, so the first for me, I think, was. The one that really got me going on reptiles was probably finding a Florida box turtle. And then um, I kind of kept it in the garage overnight and I was just fascinated by it. Let it go the next day. And then uh, I remember being in second grade maybe and uh, staring at this uh, picture of a painted turtle in a book. And just I just thought it was the coolest thing. And you know, we were supposed to be reading other chapters in the book. I was just staring at this picture of a painted turtle and I wanted one really bad. I told my parents I wanted a turtle for my birthday. Got a red-eared slider. And uh, ever since that red-eared slider, everything's just kind of taken off ever since. So yeah, the red-eared slider was probably the first. And then the thing first that was not a turtle was a baby green iguana. And he, he did really good for a while. And uh, I, I don't even remember what happened to him. I don't know, maybe I traded him at like a, a Florida herp thing. I can't really remember, but I did have a baby green iguana for a long time, so um, yeah. Red-eared slider and green iguana, pretty uh, pretty common stuff. Um, but that, you know, that's how it was in the, the late 80s, so. All right, so this next question is a really good one. Um, and something I was just thinking about uh, the last couple times I went out herping, and that is from Disco Monkey 31 and he asked, have I noticed a decline in reptiles and amphibians when herping within the last decade in my area? And I would definitely say since 2011, uh, definitely seems like uh, a lot of populations of things have either gone down or disappeared, um, whether that's from environmental factors. So it would be from, you know, uh, hurricanes and weather systems coming through and changing the course of like a creek or a stream, for example. Um, it, it could be from runoff from, you know, uh, parking lots, shopping centers, you know, being built up on uh, stream edges. Uh, or it could just be from lack of suitable food or lack of suitable something that you know turtles and reptiles need in the habitats that I'm in. But I've definitely noticed that uh, it seems like a lot of the loggerheads have either disappeared or moved to different sections of streams. Uh, I see the same thing with striped neck musk turtles. But loggerhead musk turtles and striped neck musk turtles are really good indicator species for the health of a stream because they're feeding on things like snails and mollusks that need a clean, healthy ecosystem. So um, when they're absent, that's a good indicator that maybe something else is going on. And then the other side is, 
they're also heavily poached for the pet trade, so that could be a factor as well. Um, so it does seem that in a lot of places things have gone down or uh, started to disappear, but then I also will find new areas and they're doing completely well. So uh, it does, I think change is constant. Uh, I think that you know there's natural change and then there's change from you know things done by man and uh, I guess we're gonna see how it happens I mean maybe in the next 10 years things get better maybe things get worse um, but hopefully you know we, we can help it before it gets worse if it's if it's something done by us so. I don't know is that a good answer I kind of rambled all right this next question is from Alfredo Renega and he says any medical DIY solutions that are minimal enough to avoid a vet visit um, I mean, generally, if if you have something you think is medical and needs a vet visit, you're better off just to go to a vet. I mean, there are some small things. I mean, if I see a very small scratch on the shell, a very small scratch on the skin, you can monitor that. Um, if your turtle has early onset of like swollen eyes, uh, they do make eye drops. Uh, you can buy it pretty much any pet store. You can give them some eye drops. Uh, you can use betadine solutions and stuff like that for minor things, but. I always side on if there's something seriously wrong with your turtle and you don't know what it is, man, just take it to a vet. Save yourself the headache, save yourself the heartache, do the right thing, take it to the vet, man. All right, next question. Owain Morgan asks, do I think that some of the terrapene genus should be broken into true species? Um, I mean, I was fine with them being subspecies, man. I mean, they're all pretty much the same. So I'm pretty much good with how they've been. Uh, I do think that, um, at one point they were trying to lump Gulf Coast back in with Eastern uh, and and all that but I think that there may be some work going on with the three-toed box turtles where they may be uh, either lumped in with an, another existing group of box turtles or they may be their own thing um, I'm not really in the know on that so hope that answers your question all right so next question comes from Frank underscore turtle underscore tanks and he says our loggerhead are loggerheads and razorbacks as cold hardy as common musks? Um, I guess it depends on where you live. If you live like where I live in the south, both are about the same and it doesn't really matter. But let's say you lived in Canada. Well, the common musk turtle ranges all the way up that way. Uh, the other two don't. So I would imagine that loggerheads and razorbacks are a little bit less cold hardy. Um, so it just depends. If you're going to keep them indoors, it's kind of irrelevant. Um, and then if you live in somewhere that's a bit warmer, probably still irrelevant. So what you want to look at is the range maps and where they both naturally occur and that'll kind of give you some insight into how cold hardy they are. Hope that helps. All right, Sternotherus.carinatus. What is my favorite colonian to find when I'm herping? Um, I, you know I love finding alligator snapping turtles, but I think the thing that's maybe the most fun for me to find is a species of map turtle that I haven't found before. There's something about how shy they are and how quick they are to flee that you may not even know they're there. Um, so when, you, when you're actually, uh, a lot of times I'll have to snorkel to find them. So when you snorkel up on them and you see them underwater and you kind of get them for the first time, man, that feeling is cool. Map turtles are so elusive and, and so shy that I feel like you really have to earn it when you find them. All right, so that's it. Thank you guys so much for your questions. I'll see you guys again on Tuesday. Take care, like, comment, subscribe. Peace out. I'll see you later.